Hey everyone, it's the Edge Guru. Um, after I made the first part of this video, I realized that I had forgotten quite a few decks in the uh, video. So I decided to make a part two, um, because I believe there's a lot more decks that should be given credits format, because they have a very, very good chance. <clears throat> um, first one is Dragons. Um, dragons are by no means out of the count. I mean, yes, they lost two of the Red Stars and Metal Dragons, but that doesn't really stop them. I mean, High Radics and, you know, even Chaos Dragons and stuff like that. I mean, they still can just go crazy on you with the cards they have right now. So, even Dragoonities, actually. I don't know if you guys have seen that, but Dragoonities can exceed, like, freaking Madman. And then, of course, they have their no normal nuking stuff and their normal synchroing, so they can literally do whatever they want. So, you know, Dragons are still there. Watts are there. Like, I forgot that one, too. Um, Watts are a really big deck because they're lock right now, like, it just can win games left and right. I mean, you pull out the Wattlock, your opponent's like, uh, if they don't have a card to stop it, they they lose, like, period. And, you know, so Watts are a very good deck right now in this format. Um, Gladiator Beast. You know, they're another deck that's coming around because they're all four stars. They can exceed, they can, uh, they can't really synchro. Like, not, they exceed or they, or they contact fusion. They don't synchro. But, they literally have such a great toolbox of stuff that they're still a threat, just, Everybody's kind of fallen out of favor of using them because they were seen as slow for a while. But with the meta slowing down, we could definitely see some more GB uh, players coming back into this meta. Um, Blackwings. I know they only got one Kalut back. I understand that. But Blackwings is actually a very interesting deck right now. Um, now, I'm not talking about straight Blackwing. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about the Zephyr and the Genesis Ally Birdman stuff. Like, you can, you can Synchro... You can uh, exceed, but mostly, Blackwing's power comes from the ability to, I guess you could say, push really, really hard. Like, if you use your cards right and just whittle down your opponent a little bit by little bit by little bit with Icarus Attack and MST or Night Beam or whatever, if you can whittle them down to where you think you can go all out on them, you can literally kill them in one turn. It's scary. Blackwing's have a lot of explosive power, so... We'll have to see how they do this format. Karakuri, another deck that's really explosive because it just, you know, Karakuri's have always been the deck that you just, you, you, you know, you go to a regionals and you're like, yeah, I'm 3-0, and oh, I'm ready for any of the meta, and then all of a sudden a Karakuri comes along and you're like, what the fuck is this crap? So, Karakuri are still running around and being a nuisance like always, um, but they're a really good deck because... They can literally do whatever they need to. They can exceed, they can synchro, they can synchro out the freaking wazoo. And then their cards are actually really nice. Um, scraps, same thing. Scraps are along the same lines. They're, oh look, I'm going to blow up your card, I'm going to synchro for this, and you know, do this, and do this, and next turn I'm going to do it all over again, even if you destroy my field, you know. So it's pretty nasty. Um, I believe the, the main combo in the deck is Scrap Dragon and Scrap Golem, I think. Don't quote me, but I believe, that, I believe that's what it is. And literally, they just keep making Scrap Dragon again, and you hate your life. I mean, that's pretty much what it is. Um, so, Scraps are still there. Um, gadgets, you know. I mean, in this meta, you've got you've got double Mirror Force, double Torrential Tribute, triple uh, Deep Prisons, double Bottomlesses, double Warning, Solemn Judgment, Veilers. I mean, there's just so much stuff. Like, I actually believe Gadgets could actually make a comeback. Because even with one ultimate offering, yeah... Your chances of drawing it are less, but if you draw it, you can literally just kill your opponent in one turn. I mean, I've actually done that. I've been playing gadgets online. I've been playing my 60-card gadgets, mind you, and I'm beating people with it in the new format. And I've played Windup and Zectors, shit tons of Gravekeepers. Um, you know, I've played all kinds of different decks in my gadget deck, and you know, they're they're actually really amazing. They're like, wait, what is going on here? Because you literally you have one gadget and three back rows. They try and summon a monster, you just trap hole it. They're like, okay, fine. They'll set a back row, set two back rows, whatever, they'll end. You go. You summon a gadget. They're like, sure, you search another one. They're like, okay. Like, okay, overlay. Go into blue gadget. And they're like, all right. And you're like, okay, detach. Grab Mach and a gear frame from my deck. They're like, wait, how did you just search Mach and a gear frame? You're like, hi, guess what's coming next turn? And, you know, the blue gadget, if they don't kill it, just keeps doing it. Over can search you um, gadgets, can search you gear frame, can search you any number of monsters. So, I mean, it really is an amazing deck. And then, like I said, you, you've got... You've got all kinds of stuff to protect you from stuff. So, I mean, it's re it's really good in my opinion. Um, and if you could do ultimate offering with the gadgets, like, hands down, you are going to destroy them in that turn if they don't have an answer. 
Yeah, I, I actually did that to somebody because I uh, got my ultimate offering first turn. I had five cards and a gadget, so I just set five cards and passed. Um, and he went, he summoned a monster, set, I think two back rows on me, attacked me. I'm like, sure, I'll take it. He's like, your turn. So I drew. I'm like, okay. I'm like, summon my gadget. He's like, solemn warning. I'm like, sure. I have to call the haunted. Bring back my gadget. He's like, okay. I'm like, search your gadget. He's like, sure. I flip over my, uh, calls on, I flip over my ultimate offering. Gadget? Yeah. Gadget? Sure. Gadget? And, he, and, you know, at, at, when I get to the fifth gadget, he's like, oh, okay, I'll activate Torrential Tribute. I'm like, um, okay, I'll activate Starlight Road. I don't get the Stardust, but I don't care. You don't destroy my gadgets. Guess what? You have no more background. I'm about to destroy you. And it's funny because nobody plays hand traps anymore. They all think, oh, hand trap format is over. Hand trap format is over. We don't need Veilers anymore. Bull of crap, you don't need Veilers. If you're not playing Veilers in this format, you probably are going to lose. No lie. Hands down. Because you need Veilers. You need Veilers against heroes. You need Veilers against um, gadgets. You need Veilers against a lot of decks in this meta. And, you know, I just, I literally destroyed them in one turn. I went um, Evil Swarm, Ouroboros, um, Blue Gadget, Search to Gear Frame, Blue Gadget, Search to Gear Frame, Gear Frame, Gear Frame, Search to Fortresses, um, Overlaid. Oh, no, no, I went, summon another gadget, overlay the, the three into a Shockmaster, summon three gadgets, overlay, and I literally ended with a field of, I think I had Evil Swarm, Ouroboros, Blue Gadget, Blue Gadget, yeah, Evil Swarm, Ouroboros, Blue Gadget, Blue Gadget, um, Fortress, Fortress, was my ending field, and one turn. And, you know, he was just like, wow, what the hell just happened? I'm like, exactly. And, you know, I could have gone the triple shock master play if I was fearing a Gores, but I really didn't care. So, like, because if he dropped a Gores, they'd be like, oh, okay, use my Evil Swarm Ouroboros. Bye, Gores. You know, so like I said, it's just, you know, it, the gadgets you shouldn't be counted out. They still have a lot of power. So, you know, that's another deck that you should be looking out for. Sorry I kind of went off on a tangent, but I'll be making a deck profile of my 60-card gadget deck for you guys. I know a lot of you want that because you like that deck. Um, I'm actually really liking it, too, this meta. It actually can work. You know, last meta I was so annoyed because everything was so loopy. You know, it just... I couldn't make my gadget deck work last format because they were, every time I tried to play, someone's like, oh, look, I have an infinite loop. I'm like, oh, that's awesome, okay. Why am I even playing? Um, but it's not like that this time. You know, I can actually play, you know, play against people. Um, another deck, Machina. Um, you know, Machina Cannon and Cyber Dragons, you know, uh, Overload, Fusion. Yeah, you lost Future Fusion. I Meaning you can't do over. I Meaning you can't do Future Fusion Overload. Who cares? Um, so you lost that. But really, it's not that bad. Like, you still have a lot of options to open to you. Um,. But Machinas are definitely a good deck that you might want to watch out for. And I don't consider Machinas and Gadgets the same thing. These are not always the same thing. I was actually running my Gadget deck without Machinas. The only reason I threw them in was because Blue Gadget can search Gear Frame. And I like that. So, like I said, that's the reason I threw. I actually ended up throwing Machinas into my Gadget deck because of Blue Gadget. Uh, if you don't know what Blue Gadget is, he's um the Gear... F uh, Giga Gear... X thing, whatever. 2300 exceed, 2 level 4 machines, blah, 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 blah. You can look them up on Dueling Network or whatever. That's the blue gadget. Well, that's what I call it. Um, another thing is um, TG Stun. You know, nobody thinks about this deck right now. TG Stun is stupid, this format. I mean, you're just like, oh, look, Horn of the Phantom Beast, Horn of the Phantom Beast. Oh, look, Skill Drain. Um, you know, like, w with one of the top decks going to be Gravekeepers, Skill Drain is going to be a really good card. And then when you play Horn of the Phantom Beast and just, oh, look, attack over all your monsters, I win. You know. Listen, TG Stun is really good, this format, but nobody's seen, nobody's realized it yet. And then basically, um, sorry, one second. Um, the last deck, I, uh, well, I mean, one of the last decks I want to talk about is just basically general anti-meta. I mean, it's like, there's any number of anti-meta decks, you know, there's, I consider them all in the same pool. They're just anti-meta. They're meant to go against the meta. That's the whole point of anti-meta. Um, and they also have a really good shot, too, because, like, nobody realizes this format is a really nice format. Like, I'm actually quite impressed. Like, I thought it was going to be such a, you know, there, there's still going to be those sack decks out there, but they're actually very few and far between. Um, is, are Insectors still good? Yes, but 
they're a lot slower and they're a lot more predictable now. Same with wind-up, same with all the other stuff. I mean, you can literally go, oh, you're going to do this. Oh, I'll just stop you. I'll just stop you. Um, so, like I said, I think that there's so much potential in this meta. I mean, just, there is no, there is no limits. There is no ends. I mean, every deck, more or less. I mean, I've even seen psychic players being playing and been kicking ass because they're just summon synchro, 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 synchro. Because with that, that stupid, um, I forget the name, telekinetic power well crap. Oh my gosh. That thing with freaking Doppel Warrior is stupid. I mean, that thing with Doppel Warrior is like, what just happened? What? You know, it's just, it's ridiculous. So, I think there's so much potential in this format for, like, 30 different decks. I mean, literally, there's about 30 different decks right now that have a shot, you know, depending on what they play and how they play it. So, you know, this is the best format, in my opinion, no matter who you are, no matter what you play. If you want to play, this is the format, in my opinion, because it's an open board. I mean, it's literally just, you think you got it? Play it, you know, that kind of thing. And I like that. I love um, formats like that. I mean, I'm... I'm really psyched about this format, and I haven't been psyched about a format in two, three years, <laughs> so, I mean, I'm really psyched about this format. No, I think it's four years now. Wow, okay, anyways, we, the last format I was actually happy about was, like, I don't even know, forget it, I, it's too... Too far back to think, <laughs> but the point is, you know, I'm really excited about this format, I hope you guys are, um... No matter what deck you're running, you've got a chance. Whether you believe you do or not, you've got a chance. You just gotta play smart and you know make the right moves. So I said I I thought there was more decks that need, deserved a um, spotlight um, in the meta. That's why I decided to make a second part of the video. You know, if I miss some decks here or there, go ahead and let me know. Let me know what your opinions on those decks are. I mean, I tried to cover all the decks I could think of, but like I said, I just can't. I mean, there's so many decks. There's just no end to the number of decks that can be played in this format. It just really isn't. The only deck I don't think that will be played in this format Fortune Ladies. I don't know. I I, I haven't seen a Fortune Lady deck in like eons and crap. Um, Or Harpy Ladies. That's two. Harpies. But anyways, random tangents. <laughs> uh, I'll catch you guys later.